this point, um, I think we should stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, so we have approval of the minutes. We have draft minutes from, oh, we, do you wanna go over protocol first? It's okay, I'm sorry. We, it's okay. Um, I just wanted to, um, yeah, let me do protocol for a quick second and then we're gonna do roll call Okay. Um, after. Um, good evening everyone and welcome to our March 12th, 2024 meeting of the Half Bay Planning Commission. We're broadcasting this live on Pacific Coast TV's website as well as on local channel 27. Um, a few brief public etiquette, um, if those are in person, um, and for those that are in, on Zoom. The Planning Commission Chair will open up the general public comment section of the agenda at the time community members are welcome to speak on any item that is not listed on the agenda. For those, listed on the agen for those items listed on the agenda, there will be public comment opportunities uh, during those times to discuss. Three minutes will be given, and those in person, and then we'll move on to those on Zoom. Um, please make sure if you are um, speaking to clearly state your name for the record. Um, if you've dialed in by phone, please push star six to raise and unraise and star nine to mute and unmute. Um, I don't believe we have any correspondence or anything that was sent out um, for any of our projects and I will now turn it over to Chair Gossett. Thank you. Which there goes back to me. <laughs> roll call. Oh, so roll call please, Bridget. Commissioner Reddick. Here. Commissioner Gordon is absent, so Commissioner Hernandez? I am present. Vice Chair Johannes? Present. And Chair Gossett? Here. Thank you. Okay, the next item on our agenda is approval of minutes. We have minutes from December 12th, 2023, and minutes from February 27th, 2024. Does anyone have any um, comments or would anyone like to make a motion? I make a motion to approve the minutes from December 12th. I wasn't present for the second meeting. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a second? I second. Those all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Next set for the 27th. I, I move we approve the um, minutes of February 27th. 2024. Second, please. I second the motion. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And Chair Hernandez abstains. He's absent. Thank you. Okay. At this moment, I will open up public comment for anything that is not on the agenda. I have no one. Uh, oh yeah, I have no one um, on Zoom or in person. Okay, I will close the public hearing. Is Matthew here on Zoom? Okay. Yes, he is. He's oh, gonna, there's Matthew. Okay, he has I'm a, sorry. He I has a quick introduction, and okay. then we'll proceed All with right. the meeting. Hello, Matthew. Good evening, commissioners and community that's here with us tonight. I'm really pleased to be here. I'm Matthew Chittister. I'm the city manager for Half Moon Bay. Uh, first, I want to excuse our assistant city manager, John Dowdy, who had planned to be here tonight, but is dealing with a personal issue and um, should be back, back with us next week. Um, I'm really pleased tonight to make the introduction of our new um, interim community development director. As you all know, our former community development director, Jill Ekes, has accepted a different position in the city manager's office that will allow her the flexibility to take care of um, some family needs. And uh, in, we are doing an active recruitment for a full-time replacement. That's a really, really important position here in the city, and we want to get it right, and so we're for that recruitment now, but in the meantime, we are really, really lucky, I think, to have uh, Mr. Steve McCarris join us, and he'll introduce himself, but uh, Mr. McCarris comes um, with uh, high 
regards from um, some staff that already know him. And I personally know of his reputation just within local government, and it's um, he's very well thought of for his leadership uh, beyond just his technical skills. And so I think he's bringing a lot to the city right now and really grateful to have him. And uh, we will likely have him um, into the next fiscal year. And um, the longest we'll be able to keep him is probably next December, but I suspect by then we'll, we'll find a permanent replacement and he'll... Uh, maybe right off into the sunset, we'll see. So with that, I'd, I'd like to turn it over to Steve to make an introduction. Thank you, and um, good evening. So yes, my name is Steve McHarris, and I am here really uh, to serve you, the council, the community, the staff. I want you to know I'm here as a resource for, for you as a planning commission as well. I know I'm looking forward to meeting each of you individually, and we have some meetings being set up now, so that, um, that, that's something that I think, you know, we'll, we'll both really get to know each other a little, much better then. And, yeah, I've been in the planning, community development, city manager's office work. I've been doing this for well over 30 years, and I'm pleased. I, I, should, I, I would be remiss by not saying how much I really uh, appreciate being here and really appreciate the community in Half Moon Bay. My wife and I visit often, and now it's really nice to have a switch, switch, switch up on my part and being able to contribute in a different way. So... Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you, Matthew. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. <laughs> so we'll move on to item 1A, the signed permit for permanent identification of Coastside Hope, file number uh, PDP 23-085. And who's? Akoi uh, will be presenting Akoe, tonight. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Akoi. One. It might not light up, okay. so just just push it once and see. Now talk on it. Oh, it won't light Hello? up. Hello. There oh. you go. There we go. One of them doesn't light up for something. You got that one tonight. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Well, good evening, Chair Gossett and members of the Planning Commission. Uh, my name is Okoe Wilson. I'm the assistant planner with the city of Half Moon Bay, and I was the project planner uh, for this uh, proposal. Uh, what we have uh, today is I'll give you an overview about uh, a sign uh, at 248 Main Street associated with Coastside Hope. Um, typically, um, signs will be approved at the community development director level, um, but our code does require signs over 20 square feet to be uh, approved by the Planning Commission. A little bit about this sign is it is uh, 45 square feet, so it's 15 feet long um, and three feet in height. Um, it's made of an aluminum composite panel with an applied vinyl, and it will have exterior uh, illumination through gooseneck lighting um, that'll be down shielded. And the sign is gonna be located on the south elevation of the building so here we have some renderings that show how the sign would look from Main Street. And so it's gonna be that sign that's back kind of by, behind the car in the parking lot. Um, so it's not visible by, from 92 um, and is just slightly visible from Main Street. Uh, and just to give a bit more information on where on Main Street this is located, it is just north of the Main Street Bridge, um, so it's not within our heritage downtown. Um, so this sign is in conformance with the sign code. Um, the uh, applicant, Coside Hope, does have two previously approved signs um, totaling 22.5 square feet. At this location, they're permitted up to three signs up to 70 square feet of signage. And so this sign would bring that to 67.5 square feet. So they would be in conformance with the sign code. Uh, the illumination proposed is also in conformance with the sign code. And as mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, the reason it is here for you guys today is um, that it does require planning commission approval um, per section 1540.030 of our sign code. Our recommendation for you today would be to approve uh, this application for a permanent wall sign 
at 248 Main Street um, with, uh, by resolution and subject to the conditions of approval. And we do have um, some representatives of COSIDE HOPE here today as well. Thank you for that presentation. Um, are there any clarifying questions? Well, I, I guess I have one small question for clarification. Uh, uh, Ms. Wilson, in your, in your letter uh, permitting the sign to the applicant, you mentioned the existing illumination rather than new illumination to be added. What's the nature of the existing illumination? The existing illumination is just um, some, it's illumination illuminating the monument sign that's existing there um, with, there's an, another business in this uh, complex, uh, I believe they're called Gen Next. Um, and so that illumination is existing um, of those signs. And so this would just be an additional, one of the approved signs is an additional panel above the existing signs. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I have a question. You mentioned this is not within the heritage area. Uh, um, I, I was looking at the map in, that's included in the code, and it looked it's not a very clear map, so I'd just like to understand and make sure that it, it is not, because it looked like it was. So I was looking at the specific plan for that, so I would just want to make sure that I'm correct in, in looking at it and you know I was in I guess I should say I was incorrect in looking at that and that what you're saying is it's not in the downtown area because I had questions if it was in the downtown area yeah so my understanding is our heritage downtown Main Street is considered the south side of the Main Street bridge uh, through Correa Street and maybe Scott could verify if that's accurate yes that's, <clears throat> that's my understanding as well that it's yeah, south of the Main Street Bridge, so. Yeah, could we bring that up then and just make sure uh, uh, in, from the code? I think it's um, section, it's section uh, 1550.010 and it's item five of that area, just to make sure. I just wanna make sure, because I read it differently. I just don't wanna make a mistake. <clears throat> Yeah, so just to clarify, you're, you're looking at the, the zoning code? Yes. Okay. And uh, to my knowledge, the, the review wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily change. The, the sign code is applicable to all of downtown. So uh, there, there are some standards that, uh, that do apply. Uh, that there's a sort of a, an array of things that can be chosen by the applicant. Uh, to meet the, the heritage downtown standards, uh, but that that would certainly apply to uh, all of downtown, so. So, um, again, I need to, <laughs> I'm new to this, and so I would like to understand, and the only reason why I'm asking this is because um, I, item 5C actually calls for a certain type of script, a serif script versus a script font, and I'm noticing that on the plans, it's calling for, for Helvetia, so I, I'm not even know if I'm pronouncing that properly, and it looks, just looked like it's, it just doesn't match what I'm seeing on the code, and I don't even know if I'm supposed to be looking at that code, but that's what I pulled up and when I was researching, so if we could please clarify that for me so that I'm not imposing or asking questions that are irrelevant. So the applicant is not required to meet all sections of that code, um, just uh, two, I believe, would be the requirement. Okay. All right. I'm just okay. going to read it while... I'm just going to read it while you can go on. Right. Okay. Um, Matthew, did you wish to speak? Sure, just through the chair. I just want to make sure, maybe if we can clarify, the heritage downtown is a portion of the downtown, right? right? And then we have our downtown town center, which extends from Main Street to, you know, Highway 1 to Highway 1, essentially, on Main Street. And I, I just wonder if that's part of the confusion is what's defined as heritage downtown, which um, it, it, in that land use plan is the Main Street Bridge to Correa Street. 
So I, I, I don't know if that helps, but I know I've been confused about the downtown versus heritage downtown before. And, and the definition of the heritage downtown is the Main Street Bridge south to Correa Street. Yes, and I think we can look at the, the sign design and uh, my guess is that it meets two of the, the criteria that are applicable. So I guess I am confused. So um, anybody else can go ahead. And do you have any questions? I do not. I had one question. Um, how many signs on Main Street are uh, bigger than the code allows? Um, so that it could be slightly difficult to answer. Um, we do have a lot of signs on Main Street, which I think are pre-existing um, approval or maybe even the sign code. Um, so we do have quite a few signs that I would say maybe aren't permitted at this time that may exceed that um, in terms of since I have been with the city, uh, all the approvals I have seen within the downtown area have been within uh, conformance of the sign code. So now I, I think I understand. <laughs> so which of the two are they applying to this section? To the And I'm referring to um, section 5. 5C, and I think that you mentioned that they can pick two of those. Which of the two are they applying for their sign? Yeah, I think we're pulling up the code here to look at it. downtown here we go so <clears throat> as Okoe mentioned the sign does uh, include a um, durable high quality material and let's see I believe it has uh, raised lettering that's not one dimensional. Uh, one other thing I think I failed to mention as well is that when the sign is put up, it will have an aluminum frame around it as well, and that's how it will be mounted to the fascia or the facade. Can I ask a clarifying question? Does this sign match the other sign that's already on the building? Yes, it does. And if we approve this other sign, or does it, did it require approval? Oh, we approved it at the director level. Okay, great. So this is consistent with the other sign, it's just slightly larger? Yes. Great. Thank you. Okay. Any other clarifying questions? Uh, does the applicant wish to um, speak at all? Please. Nancy Marsh from the 
board of Coastside Hope, so I'm shepherding uh, the permit process for our move into the building. I just wanted to mention that this is an existing sign on the El Granada building, um, and the reason we wanted to move it is because we're a nonprofit and it cost $4,000 when we bought it, so we wanted to reuse the same sign, but it is in our standard format and it, it does match the other sign. So we're just trying to make sure that we don't waste the existing material. Thanks. Thank you. To the chair. Sure. I'm glad that you're moving the sign from the other up, up from the other building because I, I would think it would be a waste. I just wanted to make sure that if I'm making a uh, I'm voting on something, I understood what I'm voting on. Um, I have no issues with sign. I just want to make sure that, from my perspective, that I am abiding by the rules and the regulations on here. I am all for recycling, reuse. I do not like waste. So I just want to make sure that what I'm voting on is very, very clear. It doesn't matter whether it was approved, you know, administratively or not. My job here is to make sure that it is done correctly in my opinion. So I'm very happy. I'm a very much of a reuse, recycle. I don't like waste. So I'm happy to see that this is being moved. And I thank you for doing that. Oh, OK. Uh, does anyone else on the commission wish to make a comment or uh, maybe introduce a motion? Mm -hmm. Um, just, just to point to Commissioner or Vice Chair Joannis's point, it, it, it's helpful for us to make sure we have things like uh, clearly mapped out uh, historic downtown just for future meetings. I think it's yeah. sometimes it's it's something that we've had questions about in the past, and there are there's been more than one interpretation about this in the past. So you've stepped into something <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that you probably haven't seen before. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the item before us. Do we have a second? Yes. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Motion approved. 4 0. Okay, we will move on to item 1B the 2023 Housing Element Annual Progress Report. And I believe Scott is going to give us an update. Uh, along with Mike? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair Gossett and members of the Planning Commission. I just need a quick moment to, to switch PowerPoints here and get started. Nice to see you all again this evening. I'm going to give a brief PowerPoint presentation on uh, the housing element report. And this is something that we do every year. Uh, this, is, this year is a bit unique in that uh, this is the first report for, let's see, cycle six, uh, which is <clears throat> Uh, so we will have, you know, eight, eight reports, uh, housing element reports for cycle six. And um, this is the first year in uh, reporting uh, that will add to our um, required regional housing needs allocation numbers, otherwise referred to as RENA. Now, <clears throat> Half Moon Bay's housing element, the Planning Commission uh, previously reviewed and worked, worked hard on is pending adoption and has been submitted to the State Department of Housing and Community Development, otherwise referred to as HCD. Now staff is currently completing the revisions uh, that HCD requested uh, to the draft element and associated environmental review. Now <clears throat> I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the RENA numbers uh, that were required to document within the uh, housing element report. This slide gives you a sort of a snapshot of uh, what's included in the report as far as uh, 
RENA numbers uh, and uh, you know what's reflected in the annual progress report. Now under 23, this shows uh, the number of building permits issued in 2023 related to new housing elements or new housing units. Per HCD direction, accessory dwelling units are shown slightly different than what we've shown in the past. Uh, in the past, we've shown ADUs as moderate levels of affordability. Per HCD's direction, uh, we're, we're showing them as a um, sort of a, a blending of uh, affordability levels, sort of dividing up. So, uh, for example, very low, uh, two ADUs per 10 are shown as very low, two out of 10 as low, two out of 10 moderate, and then one above moderate per 10 ADUs. So that allows us to meet some of our arena numbers uh, where we didn't have that opportunity in the past. Now you'll notice that under low on this slide uh, is showing our, the most amount of new units issued. And that has to do with uh, the Zabala House conversion. So the Zabala House uh, was approved by the Planning Commission uh, years ago and uh, reapproved by the Community Development Director to convert 10 of the, or 12 of the bed and breakfast units to 10 apartments. And those are counted as low. So that's, that's why you see a little bit of a bump under low. Uh, notable projects that have been issued by planning, uh, the planning entitlements and uh, what we anticipate uh, building permit issuance in 2024 include uh, Hilltop Mobile Home Park, or these are, uh, some of these are under review in planning right now. 555 Kelly Avenue, which uh, is, will be coming to the Planning Commission soon. Uh, Stone Pine Cove, uh, that, that's uh, currently under review. And then Creekside, uh, that was recently approved uh, by the Planning Commission, uh, minus one lot. Uh, all of these include affordable housing units. So <clears throat> this is pretty exciting. This is, I've been working here for over 10 years now. This is the most amount of affordable housing I've ever seen come through the city. So I think in, uh, the Planning Commission has a lot to do with that. So I, I think this is something that um, all of us uh, collectively should be proud of. And uh, this is uh, more than I've ever seen in the, in the uh, housing element report. I'll turn it over to Mike Noche, our housing coordinator, to go in a little bit about uh, prog program implementation. All right, good evening. Thank you, Scott. Uh, good evening, Chair and Planning Commissioners. Uh, Mike Noche, housing coordinator for the city. Uh, as Scott mentioned, I'm going to go through um, the program implementation of the housing element really relates to a lot of the activities that we have going on throughout the year. So this is meant to be a, a snapshot and a summary of Table D that's part of our required reporting. Uh, as Scott mentioned, this uh, reflects our first year of Cycle 6. and. What we have here, um, I've handpicked a few areas that the city can be really proud of in regards to work that's being done uh, at the start of this cycle. So this does reflect activities that were uh, taking place in 2023. Uh, so under program 1-5, we've, as Scott mentioned, um, and started to get into, we've had 12 total units of ADUs permitted this, this past year. Um, and that'll be, uh, so also to add in our housing element to be overly transparent. So we've listed an average of 14, uh, ADUs per year as being our goal. So we're just under that, but years, two years previous to that, we were, I want to say close to 20 ADUs, uh, total. So, um, that was the reasoning behind that average. Our, our grand total is 112 for the cycle. So uh, 
we'll, we'll, we'll see how these numbers progress and the staff can always look at ways to uh, advance the development of ADUs and promote that. Uh, the next uh, program area that we wanted to highlight uh, was uh, preservation of at-risk units. Uh, so it, it came to be known to the city, we came across uh, five below market rate ownership units uh, this past year uh, that were on Pillar Cedos, that the original uh, development was built in 1989. Bless you. Uh, built in 1989, and uh, the owner was renting the units and then decided to condo convert. And that was long before the city had a certified land use plan uh, with the Coastal Commission. So the condo conversion went through the Coastal Commission and they attached deed restrictions to all five of the units uh, through admittedly some sort of recording error at the city or the Coastal Commission. This was not on the city's past housing element records. So it was not being tracked nor was it on our radar and when it when staff identified a unit that was for sale, and to the realtor's credit, they listed in the description that this is part of the city's below market rate ownership program, which to our knowledge, we had no, owner, we have rental uh, units in our portfolio, around 400 deed restricted units in the city. We do not have, prior to this date, uh, knowledge of having ownership units, so uh, this was Good news, the city worked really hard with uh, the realtors and the title company to certify the new owner uh, and allowed the approval for the sale to, to move forward. Um, it was very vital that we flagged this and uh, we'll be doing outreach to the owners that are uh, at this site, or at this property rather, um, who are all BMR owners, but we wanna make sure there's education brought forward um, so that they have an understanding of the sale uh, if they ever decide to sell and the sales process that's involved with uh, BMR ownership. So this will be something that the city's gonna need to beef up our own internal uh, process for. But we are identifying it as a good thing. It is a definite benefit and a community resource. So uh, ownership units are, can be a really great uh, contribution to BMR housing. Uh, in addition to a, a rental portfolio. So I'll move on to our short term uh, vacation rental, so this is short-term rentals. This went to the Coastal Commission. I know you're very aware of it, and I'm not gonna go into great detail because I'm not the expert on this subject, but it is a, a definitely accomplishment for the city that it was certified by the Coastal Commission in, in August of 2023. Uh, so program 3-2, uh, we wanted to highlight this one as the city continues to and this is really to highlight our partnerships with local nonprofits uh, and, and service providers. We, we can't do a lot of the work that we do on our own. Uh, we continue to sponsor uh, nonprofit uh, work that's done in the community through the community services uh, financial assistance program through that grant program. Uh, I think the city issued 300,000 uh, across nine organizations. Uh, we definitely rely on a lot of those folks, such as Coastside Hope, who was here this evening. Uh, staff also uh, takes great effort and uh, pride in going to any outreach opportunities that we can uh, be a part of, as well as meeting with, uh, we met with a loss this year, we met with their staff. Um, there was a staff meeting that uh, we piggybacked on and presented uh, housing information to, because we know that they do a lot of one-on-one -on -one with uh, their clients and uh, it was just helpful to, for them to have background from, from city staff. So uh, those are some of the activities that are included there that we report to the state. Uh, the next program, 3-4, Housing for Essential Workers. I felt it was very vital to highlight this program for the commission this evening. Uh, there are many activities, both under the 555 Kelly uh, project as well as Stone Pine Cove, both of which are earmarked to assist local farm workers uh, in the community. 555 Kelly specifically has, uh, in 2023, received both city and county financial uh, funding. Uh, 
total of 2.5 million in pre-development funding for activities associated with, with that project. And that'll be making its way to the Planning Commission in April. Uh, it'll be going to the AAC this Thursday as well. Um, so there is a memo published for anyone who's interested. And uh, that project there will consist for anyone, just I know you all know this, but I'll just state for anyone listening. Um, so it'll be 40 units at 555 Kelly. There is information on the city's website about the project, and that'll be uh, specifically for senior farm workers. And that's a population we've heard about that um, do not have a lot of support as they age and often either have to move in with family or do not have a, a dignified way to age in place in the community that they've served. So that uh, development there has a lot of promising um, aspects as well as a, a farm worker resource center. And we'll, we'll be looking forward to sharing more about that in 2024. The Stone Pine Cove is a very unique project that was in response to the January 2023rd a mass shooting event and the city and county have mobilized to uh, with a lot of uh, efforts being being put forth into that project and that'll consist of 47 modular units uh, for farm worker families and uh, the uh, 19 families that uh, were displaced on the two farms that were involved in that incident uh, will also have a preference to move into those uh, units and uh, majority of units uh, will be ownership units, so it'll, it'll definitely offer uh, the opportunity for those families to build equity and uh, put down additional roots in the community. All right, so uh, in closing, there is a lot of work going on uh, in 2023 and continues to go on in 2024 uh, regarding residential rental security measures and our tenant protection work. Uh, otherwise known as our tenant protection work plan. Uh, in 2023, November of 2023, the staff went to city council and at the direction of city council, uh, returned to, uh, with a few options, uh, a rental registry, discussion on rent control, uh, potential displacement assistance uh, for folks who are evicted, uh, as well as uh, code enforcement, uh, relocation assistance as well, um, and a few other items on the table, potentially up to council's discretion. Uh, so most recently in 2024, the city council did approve the rental registry that'll require all rental uh, units to, and landlords to register their units. There's information on our website about that program, and that'll be launching uh, starting June 1st and there'll be a, it'll be for at least the first year, um, there'll be a free registration period from June 1st to June 30th. Uh, starting on July 1st, it'll be $75 per unit to register, and that'll be ongoing uh, fee per unit moving forward. So I will wrap up there, and Scott and I are, are happy to answer questions. Um, the recommendation this evening in front of the commission is to confirm receipt of the annual progress report. And uh, we will be moving on to city council uh, next week and then submitting to HCD by April 1st. Thank you, Mike. Do any of my fellow commissioners have questions? I don't have any questions, but I just want to commend city staff for the amazing progress that's happened in the nine years I've been involved, not quite as long as Scott, um, but uh, we've come a long way in that time. So um, thank you all for the hard work that's gone into this. Thank you. I do have a question on table A. Um, I notice, and, and maybe I'm reading this incorrectly, but on table A, it says 880 Stone Pine is multifamily. I, I'm not sure I'm reading this correctly. And it says it has five plus units under the unit category. Uh, what, what, what is that? <laughs> so so the, the five plus units, I, I'd be happy to provide some clarification. It, it is a drop down, so it's basically any any units over five 
uh, that's, that's the correct drop down to select. And then uh, if you scroll over a little further on the, the chart, we do identify the amount of units that are included with, with stone pine. So. Just a clarification, so it's, it's considered multifamily under the project name. It says it's multifamily, it's not mobile home. So I'm just wondering if there's a distinction or I have to gain some understanding on that. Within the description, we, that, that may have been a typo that okay. it is mobile home. Okay. So we, we will certainly change that before city council, so. If I may, through the chair, um, and I, it's just an important note for for folks. As Scott was um, leading to the APR itself is an Excel document that HCD requires us to to fill out, and it's their form. Um, the attachment on the staff report makes it look like very small, and we're cognizant of that. Um, HCD doesn't allow for much flexibility on how you present that um, when it comes out and attachments and so forth. So we also just want to recognize that and apologize that it can be a little tough to read for both staff and commissioners, but we'll take a look at that item too. Yeah, understood. I just was wondering if it's classified differently because it's a, you know, mobile home park and perhaps there's shared units. I, I just needed that clarification. Thank you. Sure. I have one question. I wanted, uh, you mentioned that our current housing element was pending adoption, and I was wondering if you could tell us specifically why HCD has not adopted our plan. Go ahead and take that. So, uh, right now, the current status is that staff is making updates in relation to comments we've last received from HCD. So, uh, some cities have taken steps to adopt their housing element, even though it is not certified by HCD. Okay. Um, the city has chosen to choose the path of waiting to adopt until we're ha very close to a final product. Okay. Um, so we do plan on taking it to city council. It'll probably uh, be at city council in, in May, most likely. And then a subsequent uh, certification is what we'd like to receive from HCD uh, soon thereafter. Okay, so maybe my terminology was off. I guess maybe I should have asked why um, it has not been certified uh, as submitted last, uh, I think we submitted it last June, or May or June. Yeah, um, HCD uh, returned the, our first draft. Um, staff has been working on uh, making updates, working with our reviewer, um, and going into essentially creating the best version of the, or second draft uh, of the housing element. Uh, we've also been very uh, occupied on a lot of the other activities, most of which are in table D um, that were happening throughout 2023. So we would have liked to have got it uh, on a quicker timeline back to HCD, um, but we've been really focusing on a lot of the housing development efforts as well. So I, I just want to be okay. cognizant of that as well. But. Uh, completely understand the, the question in regards to wanting it on a, on a quicker timeline. That was our intention, too. Okay, thank you. So what were the major issues that the HCD pointed out that needed some kind of clarification or improvement on the housing element? There's a letter that was attached, um, and it goes into detail on that, and we, that's all on our website as well. We have it posted, as well as our response, initial response. Uh, we had hoped for a little bit more detail in our response from HCD, but uh, so we're we're working through some of those uh, areas of concern with HCD, and I'm not necessarily prepared to answer those specifics tonight, but uh, I'm happy to follow up anytime. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? No, I just wanted to add my uh, my kudos to what uh, Commissioner Hernandez said. We. We have a little insight over the years of how labor intensive this process is every year for staff. So thank you for, for keeping at it. And, and, uh, and I, I echo what Mr. Phillips said about the, how good it feels to have the progress going on now with affordable housing that we do. 
And the two-point font is really impressive. I haven't <laughs> seen that before. <laughs> Excuse me, Chair Gossett. Yes. Maybe we're going to do this, but um, you might want to ask if there's any public comment on this. I don't oh, see any. Oh, yes, public. thank you. Uh, anyone from the public wishing to speak out on this issue? I'm saying none. Okay, thank you. Okay, I don't think we have to uh, entertain a motion. Do yes. we just say we just um, accept the report? We do, yeah. A motion to oh, acknowledge it. Oh, a motion to you... acknowledge it? Okay. Accept it. I, I move we acknowledge receipt of the uh, annual progress r report from staff. I second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion approved. Thank you. Thank Acknowledgement you. approved. Okay, and with that, we'll move on to the director's report. Thank you. I do have a few items, and it's a little bit lengthy. Uh, I'm going to start with we have two recent coastal development permit director approvals that were that are approved, and the first one is a coastal development permit for BK Motors. I, I believe you might be familiar with this. It's a conversion of an existing building uh, from private meeting facility to a four-unit hotel B&B &B use. It includes landscaping and parking improvements, and the project also includes decommissioning and replacing an existing septic system with a connection to the municipal uh, sewer system. The uh, second item for, uh, that was approved is a coastal development permit exemption for Coastside County Water District for their Carter Hill water tank replacement and upgrade project. So this one is a project that replaces two existing aging tanks with one larger new tank. Um, it takes care of the uh, age of the tanks and uh, addresses state mandated safety requirements requiring larger reserve capacity with no increase in the number of water connections or expansion of commercial or residential water. I also have I have upcoming uh, planning commission items for your March 26th meeting. Uh, Caltrans, this is a Caltrans uh, multi-asset road improvement project. There's several components to this, and it's a pretty large project. It's a repaving of Highway 1 from Murata Road to Wavecrest Road. It includes repaving of Naomi Patridge Trail. It includes replacement of guardrails, traffic signal poles, and related safety equipment. It also has new bicycle lane striping. ADA access improvements, and it replaces select culverts with no change in capacity or drainage patterns. And lastly, for, the, uh, for information for you and the public, the Architectural Advisory Committee will be holding a meeting this Thursday morning at 9 a.m. for a design review of two specific projects. One is the 555 Kelly Avenue new mixed-use development project with 40 residential units that you just heard a little bit about. And the other is the 540 Prisma Street new mixed-use development with two units. So that is the director's report. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, do we have Planning Commission communications? Um, I just wanted to ask perhaps the city uh, manager or um, maybe uh, Scott Phillips. Um, I had seen a, some work that was being done in Pullman Ditch. Um, it was yesterday. I guess somebody was in Pullman Ditch cutting, and I, 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 I sent a text over to Moz to just make sure that, you know, that ditch has been a, <laughs> an issue for the city for a while, and I was just wondering if there's any follow-up on that particular um, cutting. I think they were in the ditch cutting the, the shrubbery, um, and it was yesterday, so I was just wondering what happened to that. Yes, I'd be happy to provide some clarification, and uh, thank you for uh, notifying us of the the work. And it, it, it was some sort of brush cutting, and, you know, um, uh, weeding within the riparian buffer. Uh, so we did notify the property owner and in writing and 
let them know that that's that's an, an activity that's not allowed, and that to stop immediately. And uh, by the by the time we you know received no, notification and went out there, most of the work had already been completed. Uh, but we did notify the property owner that that's that activity is is not permitted and um, to not do it anymore. So. Thank you. I have one other thing. I, I just wanted to follow up on that because oh, um, we've had major drainage issues there and we've had to rescue people's homes. So um, it's, is there any kind of um, citation or enforcement that would happen as a result of this? Uh, Doug w wishes to speak on this item. Uh, I'm up to my ears in Pullman ditch stuff, okay. and <laughs> it's not on the agenda, so I'm not going to go very far astray here. Um, what we've been doing when we catch somebody working the ditch is we have issued a stop work order, told them it requires permits to do that. Uh, in the case uh, last year on, uh, I think it was 2805 Shumps, uh we did issue an emergency coastal development permit with a requirement to follow up with a regular coastal development permit. And we're in the process of working through that uh, follow-up application. Um, and that's the way we're approaching those incidents when we find them now. Uh, we do have in our stormwater plan update process, we have, we have seen some preliminary updated stormwater modeling. Um, once we get that, um, I think that helps all of those owners that we have some real data to work with and, and a basis for evaluating work they would like to do or if if we have to take an alternative big picture approach. So that's where we are. Thank you, and I recognize this is not a hearing item, but hmm. 2805 could have caused millions of dollars of damage to themselves and other property owners and then blame the city. So it's just, um, I'm sure you're, as you said, you're up to your ears in it. But we um, just want to yes. make sure, and then we're doing the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, I have another um, question, and perhaps this is something that you, you can bring back to the Planning Commission, at least me, because I think I need a little bit of clarification on how the clearinghouse is used um, and how the city um, notices um, items in the, state, in the state clearinghouse when the projects come in, specifically as it regards to Caltrans projects and or, well, I shouldn't say Caltrans projects, any project that has an effect on Highway 1 and Highway 92, meaning the touch points and the connection points of any development or any projects that go through. Um, and I'm asking this only because there are many projects that are coming through in, in the near future, you know, we have 880 Stone Pine, we have 555 Kelly. We recently had a very, very heated um, discussion at the um, uh, council uh, meeting this last week on the Wavecrest project, which is an extremely great project. Um, but there were questions about, you know, that touch point on Highway 1 and um, Redondo Beach Road. And what that prompted me to do is to go back into the state clearinghouse sequinet and look at how the, the project was notified to the state clearinghouse and then how they projected out that information to the agencies. I also ended up calling the Caltrans uh, local groups to find out if they saw the project. And um, what was interesting in, in that is that they mentioned to me that if the project description doesn't even mention that there is a touch point from their primary arterial, which is their functionally classified road, they wouldn't know to comment on it. So I was really, um, having worked in this kind of work before, I was really um, confused, and perhaps I need training 
if there's something that the city staff, city staff can do to train me as a commissioner, and I don't know if the other commissioners would like this kind of information gathering as to how the city prompts the clearinghouse to make sure that Caltrans or any other agency comments back into projects that touch whatever that jurisdiction needs to touch into. Um, so that is, that's something that I want to make sure in, for the upcoming projects that are coming through. Um, the one thing that I did notice in, in my research is that the um, local development review division of Caltrans, it's for Caltrans um, uh, District 4, has a special um, email that the city, from what I'm told, was supposed to have sent reports to as well in addition to the clearinghouse. I don't know if this is something that the city does or not, but for my clarification, when I see projects, I'd like to understand that because for Caltrans not to have commented on certain projects does, did not make logical sense to me because it touched the connection point to their major arterial and primary arterial. So I just wanted to see if this can come back to Planning Commission, at least to me, or maybe I can have private training sessions, I don't know, I don't want to take your time up, <laughs> but um, to just understand the process, that's all I'm asking for. Through the chair, I'd be happy to, you know, provide some suggestions or, you know, you know, options for the commission. I, you know, I think maybe, <clears throat> you know, individual uh, meeting with commissioners individually to, to provide you with feedback on uh, the process that we go through with CEQA uh, might be the best alternative as opposed to a sort of a, you know, um, info session this evening. I, I can say that, uh, you know, the CEQA guidelines recently changed uh, compared to when I first started in this career in California. Uh, previously, it, you weren't required to submit uh, draft mitigated negative declarations and initial studies to the, to the clearinghouse. Now, all projects have to be submitted to the clearinghouse. And that is, that is our, uh, you know, our process that we go through. And uh, there is a uh, online portal in which uh, the draft documents uh, get uploaded and there's a very specific process. They have to be uh, text recognizable format. Otherwise, they won't be accepted. So uh, there's quite a few steps involved, and we're doing that for all our CEQA documents now. Thank you. And through the chair, I was just going to follow up on that. And I was just observing maybe this is less of a training and more just a memo confirming this is what the process is for these types of projects that impact Caltrans rights of way and here's how the city complies. Um, of course, you know, I love CEQA. I'm always happy to do a CEQA training, but if your question was more specific, maybe a more focused memo uh, might be helpful. Oh, go, go ahead. I mean, so, so um, I, I for one, believe it's helpful because uh, during the Redondo Beach Road project, there was definitely some confusion about two issues. One, um, whether or not a traffic study is required under CEQA, and uh, two, whether or not it was the responsibility of the applicant to address existing conditions. And so, CEQA training is like eye bleach. It's not something you want, and, um, but uh, it's it's probably something, you know, a brief training might be helpful, and maybe walking through a, a couple of specific use cases in town would be helpful from my perspective and for all of us, because that's how we get better at what we're doing here. Thank you. Are there any other Planning Commission communications? Okay, um, with that, I will ask someone to make a motion to adjourn. Can we adjourn? I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Yes. Second. 
Do we need to take a roll call? Okay. Yeah, you can just say. All those in favor of yes. the motion? Aye. <laughs> motion approved. Thank you. Mm -hmm.